Hello, Hi. and welcome to another edition of Story World Explorers, where we are exploring the story world of the Lake Effect collab. Yeah, so their project 1332 is a going to be a film dance project. So this is the first dancers that we've had on the podcast so far. Dominique Jensen, Sarah White, and Sarah Jumper, both, uh, all three of them joined us. Um, and we had a great conversation. They're very much rooted in Duluth. And the story, the world around it is really about the importance of Lake Superior. Um, the questions that we have yeah, about, we don't really know a lot about Lake Superior. And trying to bring... Yeah artists together and right. really heighten the art scene in Duluth. Well, because, you know, the lake has such a profound impact on the community and, you know, it inspires so many different types of art. You know, it feeds them, it supplies them with water, you know, and it also just is, just uh, has a magical property behind it. Right, you know? exactly. And, All the ingredients that you need for any tar uh, sort of art form. Yeah. Um, so it was a great conversation. We came up with, uh, I think, a pretty solid podcast idea to start to build up some interest around it. And they're dancers, so it's going to be, uh, you know, unfortunately we didn't get a dance, no, but they didn't have a lot of movement. But um, well, they were kind of all squished yeah, they squished together. Um, so if you're watching this on YouTube, it's coming right up. Or if you want to watch this on uh, audio with your ears, <laughs> you can do that as well. Thanks for enjoying the show. Excellent. Well, welcome back to another edition of Story World Explorers. Um, today, we are descending on the world of 1332, which is not a reference to medieval times. It's a reference to depths and fathoms underneath a the largest uh, freshwater sea that we have. Um, that's in the world, right? It's in the world. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, right. A lake superior. Um, not a sea. It's a lake. It's a body of water. <laughs> <laughs> and I said fathoms. It was a Jules Verne reference. Okay. Yeah. Um, Leagues. <laughs> Leagues. There you go. Fathoms. <laughs> Today we're with. Um, He's well with, read. With with three uh, kind of uh, with three um, with three dancers from the Minnesota Ballet. Um, we have Dominique Jensen, and we have two Sarahs, Sarah Jumper and Sarah White, with us uh, to talk about this new collab. The um, Oh, like effect. like effect collab. There you go. We just got, we just, just heard it. Just heard it. Um, so um, let's go ahead and let's dive into the world. Tell us what, what is 1332? So it is going to be a dance film celebrating the beauty and um, just extreme, extreme complexity of Lake Superior and all that it has to offer the Duluth community and surrounding communities. And we want to, we hope that this will be a jumping off project that one day we will have other dance projects, um, but we want to establish our presence in the community of Duluth. And to establish our presence, the Lake Superior is something that holds near and dear to the whole community's heart. And that's what we are to do is we want the community to be involved and submerged in our dance and movement and project. We think it's really important that we invite the community into this beautiful world of dance, especially during the summer. And that's kind of our hope is that during the summer, this will become an every year thing because Duluth is truly beautiful in the summer. Yeah, yeah. sounds good. Kind of, it, it gets so much bigger. There's so much more, many, there's so many more people here in the summer than there are in the winter. And I think that we don't really perform at all in the summer. And so there's kind of a missed opportunity for performance and sharing dance uh, with these people that come here. So we're kind of hoping to just extend our audience here in Duluth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, two, well, first of all, two two guesses where we met uh, Dominique. Um, we've been yeah, talking right, about yeah. Catalyst, Catalyst Content right. uh, Festival, so that's up in Duluth, and that's yeah. where we got a chance. And, to you meet. know, we're from Chicago, so we've gr we've grown up next to you know a, a big body of water, of fresh water, one of the Great Lakes. But you know, we would fight to the death over which way to make a hot dog. Where you know, people in the Duluth, there's so much love and admiration for the lake, and so. You know, and it's like everybody's so proud of that lake. Mm -hmm. It's it's the biggest. It has you could you could what is it? You can um, surf on the lake, which yep. is the only lake you can do that because it gives you that. It has enough wind surface to be able area surface area to do that. Um, so kind of like 
so the the lake clearly has a huge effect and that's kind of why you guys want to start doing well it's called the lake effect um collab so right. now let's get kind of into what does that lake mean to the community and then also kind of get us into the mindset of a Duluthian. <laughs> well, I think a lot of people's um, livelihood depends on the lake. Um, it provides, you know, drinking water for all of Duluth and Superior and up into Michigan and Ontario. But many people's jobs also depend on the lake, whether that's recreation or it's, you know, mining or any of the other things we have. Um, it's a huge Duluth is huge port as well. And so that's a big kind of historical reference point for this area. People are really proud of that fact and the culture that that has brought to this area. Um, and then in addition to that, it's humbling to look at every day and the city is right on the shoreline. So when you're driving just along to the grocery store, you can look out and you see this just vast blue mass and you instantly are kind of centered and are reminded of I don't know, not like your smallness, but you're humbled by its depth and vastness. And then you're reminded like, okay, maybe my problems aren't so big today because there's a thing that's yeah. huger, like bigger than I am. And it can keep you centered and grounded in that way. Yeah. I think too, the other thing is, is the lake changes so much on a daily basis. Like we have this saying and we call it sea fog, like during you know, the changes between spring and winter, there's like this fogginess, this eeriness that's really beautiful. I mean, it's like, it's very mysterious. And then not only that is sometimes we get these giant windstorms and you can literally stand and watch these huge, massive waves come. And it's just like, it's wild. And then other days, like there's, I think it was five years ago, the whole lake froze over and people run the lake. Like it's just, it's, people are crazy about this thing <laughs> you know like I'm not originally from Duluth I'm originally from from Florida so I've always been surrounded by a large body of water and it's kind of cool to live here I feel like I don't miss the ocean because Lake Superior is so big you know it's just it's really really neat and you, I want everyone to experience that and I think Duluth would truly respect and honor and love what we do to portray the lake yeah. I think also there's kind of like this ominous, like mysterious energy that I get from it. Um, like there's all these shipwrecks and you hear about all these myths and like mythical creatures that are in it. And there's just something like, I don't know, it's just so big and like there's so much unknown about it that I think it has like a, which is, I don't know, it's, it's like yeah. intimidating almost. And yeah. So. It causes all of these really, like Sarah was saying, like weird uh, weather behaviors. And, you know, people always like to talk about the weather, right? But it, like, it does, like it can create mirages where you see, I think I sent you guys a photo of the, the boat and you could see the mirage and it was a flip image. And that happens just because of the change in temperature and the density. Of um, the sea smoke that Sarah was talking about is this really crazy thing that happens when the lake first starts to freeze. And it looks like you're standing on the edge of the moon when you're looking out on the water because mm. it's just totally like this weird atmospheric thing that's happening. Um, the lake can also like create like crazy, crazy destruction, but it also can dissipate it. So because it's such a large mass of water, these huge like super storm cells can come in that would wreak havoc and then they come over the lake and they just dissipate. And I've you know, I worked on a boat last summer and we were there on the water, like, oh, we got to like get in. And then five minutes later it was sunny because the lake just kind of swallowed it up. So it feels like there's this, I don't know, other, you this know, otherness. this otherness <laughs> of it. Like, oh, you know, no, we're going to save the people today. We'll just, we'll keep it calm or nah, I'm feeling a little bit feisty. Let's um, send giant waves. Yeah. Uh, they're reminded of. And I think sometimes like, especially as humans, like, we don't always have the words to describe it. And like, for instance, this like, you know, people talk about it and talk about it. Sometimes you just don't have the words. And that's what we want to do with our movement is we want to be those words. You know what I mean? And we have to represent Duluth in a way that they can't represent for themselves through our movement. Yeah. 
Well, one of the things that we know is that, you know, Duluth is this growing and thriving um, art scene. It's one of the reasons why uh, the uh, content festival was moved up there. Um, and it is a very quaint and, and uh, fun town. I mean, you know, you have a malt shop. You don't really find malt shops all that much. We did have a malt before we left. Um, and we did look out on the lake. Yeah, oh, it was, it was gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> it was absolutely gorgeous. We lost ourselves there for a couple of minutes. Yeah, that's you right. know. But, you know, it's like you got the hills and the, you know, it's, yeah. you know, it's not quite as flat as Chicago. And, right. And, you know, you're just like, wow. And then you look out to the side and you're like, I can't see the end of that lake. You know, there and that's, you know, go to the fact that, you know, um, you're not you're really around a freshwater ocean or or a or a sea. Right. As Frank <laughs> called it. Yeah. So there's there's so much to kind of dive into here. I mean, you guys being dancers and, and we're at a point in a moment um, just media wise where dance for a long time, wasn't being performed. Couldn't go into a theater and see it. Couldn't go and, you know, unless you were out on the side of the street, there wasn't really a, a stage for dance to happen. What we're starting to see is a lot of dance films happening, which is kind of what we're talking about here. Um, a dance film that, on your own, on your own terms and on your own schedule, being able to go and create something that you know is going to be able to connect, just how we were going through all the people um, in Duluth, but even all around Lake Superior that have that connection to the to the water and stuff. So, um, and I think we might have briefly touched about touched on it because what you guys are focusing on right now is the summer, right? And we, while we were there, um, there was a documentary on the um, on Lake Superior surfing yeah that's where we get most of our information surfing the winter surfing um which seems like a lot of people know about that but it's during the summer too that you guys kind of want to highlight it to get people more active um that this could eventually lead into some sort of like a a summer celebration like like it like and now i'm just thinking about it because i assume that there was like because they were surfing in the winter i just assumed that there was no summer in duluth Mm -hmm. like that's what i just realized right now i'm like it's always cold up there isn't it like we just that was just the one week where there wasn't snow on the ground was when catalyst was there Mm -hmm. (laughs) so yeah but like you know, kind of getting more into what what are the themes like? And I know you guys kind of touched on it, but in this particular film that you're trying to you know produce and make, what are the themes and why is it called? Why is the depth of it so important? I would also say that. Yeah. Um, well, I think like I was saying earlier, we really feel that dance has a way of sharing things that cannot be expressed verbally, and that that's I think by all of us dance, um, there's it's its own language um, and things that cannot be said can be shown um, through movement um, with music and this beautiful kind of landscape behind us. And we would to accentuate and highlight the different aspects of the lake that we find really interesting and unique, but with uh, movement. Yeah, so like we want to, Roughly, again, mm-hmm. this is very rough in, in its intimacy, but yes. we are talking about doing like three movements and each of us would, you know, pick a type of movement that we want to describe about the lake, whether that be the eeriness or the craziness of the lake, whether it's rough in the calm before the storm or just the joy of just watching the sunlight on the lake. And we probably will each of us pick one of those things to describe mm-hmm. and through that movement and that section, we will just try and describe in in a way, be the lake. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so we just want to, 1332 is a description of the lake. And we thought it was kind of like cryptic, but also a detail of the lake that we want to explain, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, yeah. the Sarah look on. Uh, right. um, <laughs> yeah, so what's 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 interesting is that even if it, in these like in a, a three structure type of thing, and one of the things that we have to Jack and I have to remind ourselves a lot of um, as we explore different types of mediums and different types of of art um, that storytelling takes on a different type of path, 
right? It's yeah. not a traditional like so. <laughs> you'll you'll see Jack and I come. Wait, wait, no, that's not what we're talking about because we will do this thing where we wanted to have like this this story that would connect to all these other pieces of content, yeah. right? Which in this case with dance, there's never really a a linear narrative right. story. What you're trying to do with dance is you're trying to get people to feel stuff. And so what even you just said, those three um, types of what you see in the lake, right? If it's rough, if it's a beautiful scene, if it's, you know, a small detail of the rocks or whatever, um, or of the, of the sea fog that you guys were talking about. Um, those are all things and experiences everybody has with the lake in a way that they can tell their own story, right? So they see the, um, the dance for... Um, when it's calm and it's peaceful, it's serene, you walk out of the, you know, you get a malt and you sit down and it's a beautiful fall day and you're looking out on the water. Right. Um, when I, and this is obviously, I can't tell you what my, my story I would tell in my own head when I see this finally done. Um, but I might reflect back onto that, my own right. experience. And, and know, that's the story that you end up telling. It's, it's, right. tell, it's, 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 it's telling a piece within. Right. And, you know, than, they're the, like, because, you know, we're filmmakers and, you know, writers, story, you know, characters, they connect, they interact. It's like it's a very literal way to tell a story. It's like the most literal way to tell a story. Whereas <laughs> with dance, with sculpture, with painting, with art, you know, on a, not well, art, you know, uh, music, you know, <laughs> I mean, there it, it's more abstract, but yet they're, it's all touching on those emotional cues. So. Like, well, it's kind of making the viewer the the storyteller, you know? Like, you right, legitimately right. have to... Well, everybody I mean, has their own impression after you go and right. see well, even something that's kind of narrative, like say, the I Nutcracker. Just, right. or you no, but I still would, feel right. something yeah. different. But yeah, it's, le it's more... It's less literal to each... Like, everybody's going to take their own piece of what you come up with. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be, a, it could be the most straightforward... Uh, hero's journey story ever everybody's going to take something away from that and it's going to be unique right. to them but it, once you start getting more abstract there is less it's not less it's less literal so you get more interact you get more interaction with the audience you get more people thinking like for someone to like light want that piece about the sunlight on the lake me and frank will probably think of the time we had malts <laughs> but some, not everybody has done that, and not yeah. everybody thinks that's the most serene experience they've had with the lake, you know? So people will piece together other things. So you're going to get this almost, you're, you're tapping into more of that collective unconscious yeah. as right. you get more and more abstract. And so, and even the connecting pieces, right? And as we go into some of these ways that, you know, this film can help launch. Um, you know, even what you guys were saying about some sort of a summer festival at Duluth, which, by the way, I think that everybody that runs Duluth is so excited about all the art stuff that it's almost like a guaranteed thing if we can get this thing moving in the right direction to actually make it happen and possible. But you're tapping into these these like kind of core emotions, um, these core inter well, forget the word emotions, core interactions with the lake. Everybody has these core interactions. You guys have identified three of them, and there's probably about 45 more, right? <laughs> that can all be experience. expanded on. Yeah, what experience. did I say? Interactions, but I like experiences better. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's, it's some, some an interactive experience. Um, and so you, you have to tap into those type of things, and those end up being the themes that are felt throughout the entire world of 1332, where you're – it's like when when you find out it's like oh hey yeah right the the festival's happening i know that we're, this is like almost like a, a celebration of the lake yeah, um right not well, to go not very, to go too like weird right. the world is surrounded about the mysticism the magic the experience right the power it, it honestly of it, this lake. it seems like it should be like a pagan holiday to be honest it <laughs> really does the lake, and, the festival, the lake festival. Well, think about, I mean, we were talking about a whole bunch of cool stuff about, you know, how we want it. There are a lot of photographers, there's a lot of artists, there are yeah. a lot of musicians, there are a lot of blah, 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 in Duluth, right? How can we get all of them inter interacted? Now I'm just saying the same word over and over again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Experienced. Um, um, how can we, how can we get them all inter interacting i guess the only way interacting with this with this festival on a different way i mean yeah to make uh to make a, a yeah. like superior like uh because you human know, representation yeah. well, you have you a know, whole bunch of cool the stuff the thing like about that. you know they they 
you know, I don't know, I say they, even though I must have read some random article or some random YouTube video or some tabloid somewhere, but they, the collective they, um, someone told me now, it's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> but I've heard or read somewhere that they say that <laughs> being near water is a very much helps with creativity and so the fact that this lake has so much you know it, there's mysticism there's you know because it's so much bigger than Loch Ness it has many monsters right mm -hmm. and you know like you said it's like one second it could be like I'm gonna destroy you and then the next it'll be like you are free to explore me human <laughs> you know so it, it is there is this and so to kind of it's almost like to pay tribute to the creative power of this lake and you know it, it, like tribute yeah, you know, yeah like, like, don't pay... slaughter lambs but you know dance and <laughs> take pictures and i like this idea of like some some sort of like a pagan uh festival you know, of some what kind sort. of and the you know there's also f the like you said it's like the livelihood it feeds us it you know, gives us water. There's, but, like, you know. Yeah, right. It has that, but it also has so much unknown that we also know yeah, from right. the documentary. Right, we exactly. don't know how, well, we don't, we don't know how deep it is. I don't know where you got the number from. We don't know. <laughs> it's a, a vague lot. estimate. <laughs> you threw a pebble down and you counted until you couldn't see it anymore. Right. But you have, there is so much unknown about the way that right. the lake works. And so that adds to this kind of mysticism where you can see where all those stories that you guys sent us that those kind of pop up and that can be used even further into dance and into all the other forms of art and to end up making a a, a festival a summer festival celebrating yeah, this right. thing that we know a little about but not a lot and a lot of that we could have fun with by filling up with our own like epic like, stories like, of how like, things work right you know? like frank was saying it's a pagan holiday but it's almost like it'd be kind of a cool like I don't know, like an art, like, you know, that we're all a part of the occult of artistry, you know, and so mm -hmm. we can explore and, you know, this, you know, because it is such a pop, like, you know, you don't just go to Duluth and not know about Lake Superior, you know what I mean? It's sure. not like, I mean, you, you know, come to Chicago and people, oh, yeah, you know, I want to go to the beach, but it's so much more like it's there, you know, it's there, everybody talks about it and everybody has an experience with it. And so it's almost like the oasis of like, you know, the depth of creativity, perhaps the, the magical waters, perhaps um, of the lake. So I don't know. I, I we, just, well, we spit a lot at you. So uh, yeah, come right. back at us. <laughs> yeah. Tell us that we're crazy. Tell us that we don't want to make it a big no, holiday. You hit on a lot of like, we really believe that there is a lot of opportunity for collaboration, which is why we kind of wanted it to be like a fat collab because we see the lake as like a gathering place and we believe that, that there could be a lot more interaction than is happening currently and so we were trying to find a way to bridge that gap and find a way like a place to start that yeah. so even with this first project we're planning on like collaborating with musicians and film and dance so that's already three different like forms of art coming together to create this one piece and the hope is that that will inspire, you know, future projects. future projects where we're working with other mediums. And it, you know, it doesn't always necessarily have to be about the lake, but that's where it starts um, because that's kind of our gathering point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, we actually have, it's funny that you bring up other artists and everything in the area because we kind of had two ideas and we're hoping to use our other idea next year once we kind of get the ball rolling because we figured this would be a much more attainable goal at first, but we're hoping in the future to work with other artists. Like there is this boat maker on first street and he builds, I think they're like uh, Scandinavian boats for the lake. That's his art, like <laughs> traditional, like canoes, like hand carved, like just artists that, you know, are still making these like traditional and beautiful work that, you know maybe i'd have to grow my beard out a little longer <laughs> well the next the next time that we're there you guys are gonna have to take us in that boat guy that like, you know, it seems right like there. it seems like we have to go during the summer because apparently there's it's a whole bunch of people there <laughs> yeah, it's right. like a new i'm not kidding like everybody is outside i remember like my first summer here it was why are so many people walking around like this seems a little odd but like 
everybody comes out of their house and is so happy because everyone's been stuck inside, you know, negative, negative 50 degrees in February. And then June and July happens and it is just it's beautiful. It is the community is happy and just joyful. And we want to celebrate with everyone, you know, and we want to celebrate this beautiful lake. Yeah, yeah. It really does bring people together. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. I think also with the like the extreme change in temperature and stuff here, everybody who lives here, when they go into this hibernation, they all have like something they're passionate about that keeps them like able to like make it through the winter. <laughs> so like I have a friend who does stained glass and she's really good at it and has been doing it for like 30 years. She's like this old lady and I don't know, she's like so about it and she does that like she has like a three month project that she'll work on like through the winter and keep it going and I don't know I just find that so interesting that everybody just has like they're not like inside watching Netflix all winter like everybody has something that they're trying to like create or like work on during this time so just like celebrating that creativity that everybody has here mm-hmm. yeah now, regardless if this becomes a pagan holiday, which I'm still going to push for because it sounds amazing. And then you also saying that, that right. it's a boat maker. It, right. It's a <laughs> pilgrimage. It could become an artist pilgrimage. You yeah, Go to right. Duluth in the, in, in, uh, on the solstice, the summer solstice for the right. big parade. It's got a whole bunch of fire. There's a lot of dancing fire, going on. and got very dancing, cool. Dancing, photography, <laughs> boat making, oh. boat fishing. <laughs> Someone is fishing on the boat and then fries up a beautiful carp or whatever the hell is in the lake. <laughs> and then you could do, oh, you could do like an honorary Vikings funeral type yeah, thing. Add right. that in there. And then right. the Everybody the puts their projects, their passion oh, projects into the boat and then they burn it. And then it's, it's like, the, lets oh. it into the ether and then the lake swallows it. And the lake swallows it and takes and, it into consideration. And then, yeah, right. And then you could see the northern lights. I don't know exactly what I'm... Was a couple wow, you're just... Like the northern lights do show up here. Yeah, it, not in the summer though, right? Or during? They do sometimes. Okay. Oh, See, there, there you go. go. If the northern lights show up, then it comes true. Right, right, right. There you go. Now, whether or not that actually happens, yeah. let's go. We're pushing hard for it. The um, this idea of of a celebration of art can be uh, uh, with many different themes as the underlining piece of it. Um, with the lake being a goddess or not can be the focal point of it. And I think it really should, because, you know, honestly, when we were there, that's ever, everybody, all anybody ever talks about is the lake, right? Um, it's like the kid that you guys had. So everybody always talks about it, doesn't want to talk about anything else. Um, isn't the lake amazing? Yeah, isn't the lake amazing? Look how cool it is. <laughs> you gotta come see the lake. Um, <laughs> yeah, <right>. <laughs> it should be the focal point, though, of any fu- summer festival. And then the outlying motif of it is how artists are coming together. I love the yeah. idea of a pilgrimage and then the burning of the boat and everything. But once again, not going to force our own ideas on you. But... <laughs> You have like you have this this opportunity with the lake, and we know that there are so many cool art things that are happening to try to bring that together. Starting off with this film, but then starting off also like you guys have been saying and talking to other artists and trying to figure out what that collaboration looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, and the big thing of starting something that everybody's going to get excited about. It's the potential of how big that it could possibly get and say like, hey, you know what? This would be a ongoing right. once a year for a weekend festival where everything is just all art. Everybody has their art out. They could sell their art. They could right. they could do whatever Camp they want. out on the lake. Right. Um, so we have, you have that. And it's reminding me a little bit of a Renaissance fair um, type, of, type of deal just because you have all those artisans coming out with all their stuff. Like, ha ha. Now, once again, dressing up, I mean, I would love it to be like with druids and stuff, but you know, you're talking about I mean, getting and activating a community that is already there around the thing that they already love, um, and and finding a way to make that a an expression to invite more people, more tourists. Now I'm starting to think business wise, um, more tourists, more um, investment um, from Minnesota in general um, into Duluth and the area around it. Um, to get more activity, to get spur more economic um, uh, growth. Um, so taking it from that standpoint too, you know, it's just another thing to kind of consider when we're thinking about what this first film 
that you know we're gonna have music from Duluth and everything should be from Duluth. If you can't find it at Duluth, then figure it out then yourself. Pray to the lake, and <laughs> it'll yeah, give it'll it to give you. it to you. Um, because this could be a great starting point to then launch into what eventually could become you know three four years down the line um, a, a summer festival that that can then go on for you know ever. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, our, um, something we were talking about before. So like traditionally for dance, we would rent studio space and choreograph, you know, cause you know, we don't just freeze when the <laughs> camera comes on. Like it's obviously like planned out. And something we were kind of like discussing is that since it would be a film and it would be near the lake, we wouldn't be in a traditional studio. So why not go to parks and stuff and rehearse there so we would oh. you know what I mean so like that could possibly entice investors like since we won't be on a stage at least right now mm-hmm. let's do it out in public and get people interested like what's what are you guys doing you know yeah right it, that's kind of our other thought is that we try and bring the audience in so they want to stick around yeah yeah I think I mean the Alley Company has been here for a really long time, but Over 50 years. which is crazy the size of the city to have like, you know, Queen Valley is a very old traditional style of dance and art. Um, and so I think that the fact that it survived here for so long is incredible and shows that there is, you know, support in the community for this. And we see that that support is like missing this opportunity in the summer where mm-hmm people outside of the area come to visit Duluth, like all the tourists. Um, and so I think that we're off, what we could offer is in our off season where more people from outside are coming in, we can share with them this, you know, beautiful art that we're creating here so that they may, maybe they brave coming up in the winter instead of just always coming for their malts in the summer, you know? <laughs> Yeah. like it can kind of expand beyond that they're like oh wow this stuff is happening here all the time we thought you know it happened in, you know and, in july and based on what you said about how everybody wants to be outside then that means that you know it's like why don't we bring the art to where the people want to be you know it's yeah. like you're not going to be able to get people into a theater when you know they spent the last six six to seven months in a you know there, you, there's no place in Duluth you can't get to underground, right? <laughs> underground, or <laughs> not like underground, but inside. There are mole things. people. <laughs> no, but like it's it's what do they call it? The no, you mean the skywalk? The skywalk. It's not underground. It's not underground. It's enclosed. It's the opposite of underground. It's enclosed. <laughs> I was thinking of New York. You can't get any. You could go anywhere under underground in New York. In New York. Okay. Well, what's also really cool is um there are believe it or not outdoor theaters like the place that always comes to mind is lee erickson park mm-hmm. they have cool like it almost is renaissance-esque it is it totally <laughs> is it's on that like thing. like stage with like stones and stuff and it's like it's almost like an amphitheater the mm-hmm. way it's set up and it, the lake is right behind it like that ultimately like that's my dream <laughs> yeah to it's, be able to have something you know the movement and dance on that stage where people you know, are already gathering because that's a very commonly trafficked area. Um, so I think even like you were saying, like it's an, it's a public space. So there's no reason why we couldn't be rehearsing up there. And then people go, oh, hey, what are you working on? Or like, wow, that looks interesting. And um, just to show them, a lot of people know what professional dance looks like or that it's, you know, a real thing. Like they get paid to do this. Yeah. Don't just like dance around, you know? Yeah. It's our jobs and our good and. I don't know. More people should know that. Yes, agreed. I think the biggest thing that the problem with um, with dance and people coming to see dance, it's very similar to um, somebody going and seeing an opera or somebody going and seeing like orchestral music performed. Um, the problem is, is that a long time ago, somebody said that was fine art and lowly pe- peasants couldn't possibly understand what was going on. And that persists to today, right? And I, I told you guys that I've been doing work for a, a dance nonprofit here in Chicago, and that's that running into it every single day. Every interaction with the community, it's like, who goes to see dance? Other dancers. Well, this is a city with 
you know, three and a half million people and the only people that are watching dance are other dancers because everybody else goes like, am I even going to understand it? Right. And yeah. here we have an opportunity now too, where right, once again, this big overarching that you guys can change the world in, right? It's saying, you don't understand dance. Do you really understand how, um, you know, uh, I was going to say painted glass. What is it? Stained glass. Stained glass. Thank you. Stained glass is made. Do you know how, how ridiculous it would be to buy a Viking boat if, you know, like you're not a Norwegian, uh, you know, explorer, right? What what do you need? But we do know that we all understand the lake. So if we come in with that and we yeah. say, you know what, this is just expression. This is art. Um, you got to know that it's all about the lake. You understand it's about the lake. Then everything else can kind of take its path forward. Um, and it, it'll become a little bit more accessible to the point where, Hopefully more people go and see when you guys do ballet performances. Um, and it's not the same old suspects over and over again. It's people going and exploring this stuff. Um, TV and film have, you know, the great, um, had the great blessing of being denounced as art a long time ago so that everybody felt it was accessible to them. And now we're expanding on that. And we have to start doing that with some of these quote unquote fine art Right, where with dance and, and uh, like I said, opera too. Like I want to go and see an opera, but I also feel very intimidated to go and see one. So, what this film and this project, thirteen thirty two, can really start to do is break down that barrier and start to get more interest in arts of people that wouldn't necessarily go and start to expand those communities out. So, just another food for thought there. You know, I always like to make things. Um, the impact of the work that everybody does can have profounding ripple effects lake pun or is it a lake pun would that be a pun it's a pun now um <laughs> right the ripple effect yeah, out odd to future um and to future uh projects for other people that not even don't even need to be in the great lakes area to then uh hone in on that and make connections to things that everybody understands and say hey this is just an expression of that just like <laughs> if we were going to do like a, um, a a series this came to me a series based off of Lake Superior and an ancient pagan cult that still meets there yeah, and right. has all these crazy things that we kind of want to infuse and force yeah, upon right. you but we weren't going to do it um, even though we keep mentioning it um, so let's talk let's talk a little bit about how we can get this project off the ground and mm -hmm. and get it going like like I had said before the business part of my mind had turned on because you know this festival idea right if we start from the where we want to go not from where we are now is has huge tourist implications and has huge economic implications we know that the minnesota film office um and uh duluth and all those people that are in the world of tax write-offs and everything are really pushing for more series and films and stuff to be filmed in that area so why not try to make it like, you know, when obviously they, they fund a whole bunch of stuff for Catalyst as well to get more people up there to experience the power of the lake and the power of the area is to say, hey, well, listen, now we got this art festival because we're going to try to inspire more people. We want more dancers up here. We want more, um, you know, artisans, we want sculptors and whatever. We want people to come up here and be like, I found my new home. Hey, look at this. Right. I don't have to be in New York. I don't have to be in L.A. I don't have to be in. Uh, Chicago not most most artists leave Chicago but you know so yeah. we have that's where we want to go and we know that that would be fantastic for the economy we know that that would be fantastic for uh, tourism and and just the yeah the overall economic health of the area so starting all the way at the beginning right we're now we're sitting there going like okay well we know where we want to go but we have the community of the artists that's where we that's where we can start right and the people that already support art in the community and be like hey this is what we're trying to do we're starting on the film side of things because we feel like that and i've said it a million times i mean film encompasses every art form that imaginable everything mm -hmm. movement and, and and photography and yeah. image anything anything you possibly think of it includes so it's a great starting point for that project and i think that just even coming up right now, going back and forth on some ideas of how we can engage the community. You guys already said about, you know, rehearsing in public um, and doing that whole thing um, to try to get people like, hey, what are you what are you doing? But even going out and trying to find those communities that are already meeting, right? The 
the I was going to say the the Sculptors Guild. I don't know if there's Sculptors. The Sculptors Guild. Guild. In Duluth, they have yeah. a chapter there. Yeah. Um, the Sculptors Guild. Don't look for that. I don't think that exists. Um, but places that these these communities, a cultural center, whatever, that are already meeting, that are already trying to do other projects and trying to come together and say, great, well, we could probably support everybody's project to get to this end goal, and it could all be transmedia outlets of supporting yeah. the entire uh, right. project you know, as a whole. It's, it's, it's the no-brainer of, like, you know, kind of posting and, you know, figuring out, you know, how to, like, because if you're going to be... Um, like rehearsing in public that's all that's great content to be pushing out as well but you know even thinking of like having other artists around there while you're doing the art too so like you can have someone who might be painting an interpretation of the movement that they saw on the day and you know that could be something interesting as well to be like hey look at this these are pictures from this but here's this artist who was inspired by what we were doing you know yeah. and it's like you're thinking about exposure right i hate the word exposure for many reasons but you're thinking about exposure because all of a sudden then you have all these other these individual communities pushing out kind of the same thing that's like hey it's this 1332 doesn't necessarily have to be but it's the lake effect collab like this is all the great art that hey did you see that they were rehearsing at that amphitheater no well here's a painting of it and i know that i that this guy who did the painting He's got, you know, X amount of people that are always looking at his work and being like, hey, look, yeah, they're, they're dancing. Hey, you want to find out? This is all connected. All this stuff is connected. And trying to find that, that's kind of just going back to the beginning, those interactions or those experiences with the lake. Like if you identify those, like say three core pillar ones that you want to always be going after, those three main experiences that people have on the lake, and then having those artistic interpretations of it really can help hone down and be like, listen, that it would be a, an unending momentum trying to get it to the point of, of some sort of a festival. It would almost be like, no, duh, that's where that would go. It's inevitable. There you yeah. go. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> Lake Effect Artist Festival. Right, exactly. Right, yeah. Headquarters in Duluth. Headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> Headquarters in L.A. No. Um <laughs> So what are so let's let's spitball let's let's try to let's try to figure out some other types of, of content like we just said like that the artist uh, painting one mm -hmm. of the people right that reminds me a lot of our conversation with uh, uh, Matthew Bowden and uh, oh right, 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 right. small giants I'm sorry I cannot it's just his name is totally slipping my mind right now um, where they were doing spoken um, it was spoken poetry with music background which is that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that's totally that's totally different. They have to create kind of create an audience, but also kind of invite more artists in. So, um, so one of the things that kind of occurred to me while you all were talking was this idea that you know here we are we're saying that we got to talk to all these different artists, we have to collab with all these different artists, and I was like, and I don't know why it didn't occur to me earlier, but there's a, a, a fantastic opportunity there to invite people into discussions in some way, shape or form, whether that's through a podcast or that's through like, you know, little quick um, interview type things where mm -hmm. you can really start to talk. Because, you know, when Jack was saying about that guy who had, who had had a really tough life, you know, multiple DUIs and everything. And then he found himself when he found photography in the lake um, mm -hmm. and has, you know, been able to change and turn his life around. You have all those type of stories. It doesn't have to be that heavy hitting Right? right where it's like oh my god you know like mm -hmm. you know, if the lake wasn't there this guy'd probably be dead um mm -hmm. but it can be as impactful because you could talk to you know a, a saxophonist or some sort of a, a chamber music group or a band or a, um, a painter or whatever mm -hmm. and have them on and just kind of share admiration for the lake and i think that that would be a really good community mm -hmm building right. tool because like we've right. been saying throughout right. this entire time right exactly everybody loves the lake yeah. so if everybody loves the lake then people like to hear about their baby too right so yeah. there you have all this artistic conversation going on sure but it's not about my, right. And my, kind my, of, my, right and then i mean it could also be like what about like for artists you know just to understand you get the because you know it's we kind of were touching on the whole podcast about how powerful and how creative force you know this lake is but what does it mean to artists you know what <laughs> does this lake mean to artists and that could be an interesting couple of interesting conversations about what does this lake mean to us and right. then 
you know, for just, all the artists. Right. And that's something that I think a lot of people, well, first of all, I think that's something that you could put out into the world, just other people could be like, wow, you know, I didn't even know that lakes, like I, for one, didn't know it was the deepest lake I thought Lake Michigan was. That's just because, you know, the, the Chicago ego there, mm -hmm. we have to have the <laughs> biggest lake. But also it'd be kind of cool to be like, hey, you know, if you did come here, you could have these experiences, you know, mm -hmm. and that could be a good launch into the world of what you're trying to create with the festival, with dance being a part of the festival. Yeah, well, I mean, this... just all, because you could get a collective of artists around. Right. Just think like about that. like we've been talking about trying to get people excited, and those conversations would get people excited. People love to talk about themselves, and I would just <laughs> caution: there are way too many podcasts out here right now where we dive into the background of the person that we're talking to, and nobody knows who we're talking to. Like if we were to sit there and go, like, "Yes, please, Sarah, could you tell me everything about you?" Um, you know, like your upbringing. Oh, you grew up in Florida. That's interesting. Why did you Nobody choose, cares. Why did you choose dance? Nobody cares. <laughs> right? We care about what the work we're actually doing, right? right. Oh, we right. pause there for a second. Um, we, we're, we're interested in the work that we're actually doing. So right. um, in these conversations, it's like, yeah, you could be like, why did why did you come to Duluth? Why, why are you in Duluth? Oh, no, I was born here. And like all the stuff and touch on what inspires them about the lake and why they don't go anywhere else, right? right. I mean, there is plenty of opportunity to move someplace warmer. Um, there's plenty of opportunity to leave. There's not the only there. There's a ton of reasons to stay, but one of them can be focused around the lake and then be like, hey, you know what? Let's figure out some way that you, we can get you involved with our film as a collab as once again, the Lake yeah. Effect collab and 1332 yeah, right. and everything here that right. we can because we're doing build this on. project. We're doing this other project about dance, but it might be. It might be not, not just to it's not to not to no, like placate but, ourselves and be like yes the league is fantastic everybody agrees we already know that but to invite more people right. in yeah. right and you know and that's an interesting thing that i don't think oh, it, it, maybe it's been done but i don't think it's been done to the extent of like you know what does this like mean to specifically artists and how does it inspire people and not only just artists but the vast majority of different artists of different mediums yeah. because it is kind of this it's this twinkling little you know there's there's bakeries there that are probably inspired by the lake you know and so just the the, the sheer breadth of mediums and different things i think that's interesting and i think that's a little niche as well yeah. and i think good that to, good to have that helps lead further into the festival itself too. right yeah right because the film would be at the festival yeah. But the this would be like, yeah, of course, we're going to Amy's Bakery. Duh. Right? We <laughs> yeah. had them on. They make great stuff. They make little, like, you know, yeah, little. Mi they make the, their sea fog cookies and they're <laughs> delicious. They're fantastic. <laughs> and you can only find them there. You can only find them there. Yeah. I think our hope, our, one of our largest hopes is like, especially with art today, I feel like sometimes people um, want exposure or want to be exposed, but we want to actually pay. You know, mm -hmm. like our biggest thing is yeah. art is beautiful and we sometimes don't get the pay and everything that we need. And so we want- Sometimes? <laughs> most of, <laughs> most the, time. of the time. <laughs> but that is our hope is that we want the arts community to feel validated and respected because we want to pay them. And so that is our biggest hope mm -hmm. is that yeah. we yeah. pay everyone because their art is valued. Yeah. yeah. You're saying about how, like, I mean, art does bring in money. Having a festival will bring in people and commerce. And it, that's not always recognized mm -hmm. as I think other forms of entertainment are recognized as, oh, yeah, this is really great for our city because, you know, it brings this people in, and then they're going out to eat and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And art isn't always recognized, but it does the same thing and has the opportunity to do a lot more as well because people will continue to interact with it and kind of their you know you go to a basketball game and then the game's over but you go to an art festival and you get to take home this piece of art you yeah. know or experience of it and it, it's an ongoing thing instead of just a experience so yeah yeah absolutely i think I, and i think those conversations once again like they don't have to be a similar format to what we're doing here or like an hour-long uh, conversation yeah, right. they could be quick little vignettes something that you know it's like oh yeah i know danny oh great he was on the you know on the lake effect uh 
collab uh, podcast or the 1332 podcast. And, and like you said, I mean, some t- nobody, no artist gets paid. And I've noticed this once again, doing some work for dance, you know, there are the elite people that get all the grants and then there are people that get no grant um, yeah. and no recognition. Right. And yes, I, and I hate the word exposure for that exact reason. I hate the, yeah. the word exposure. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear the, this big <laughs> exposure for you. However, with this festival, it's mm-hmm. not about exposure at that point. It is about selling at that point. It is about getting people to see your stuff and the opportunity to find something that they didn't know. If mm-hmm. I had the money to buy a Viking ship, I'd buy one, <laughs> right? That they'd just be like, how cool would that be? Come on now, you're looking at me like I'm crazy. We'd just keep it in Duluth, and every time that we go out there, we'd take out executives and then yeah, like but, I don't know, but, dump yeah, them over. But, you get seasick on whale boats. That's true. <laughs> That's true, but I will I'll deal with it. It's, it would be a, if nothing else, it's just a beautiful thing to look at. That's what a lot of people with boats do. They just go like, "Look at that thing! It's gorgeous." Mm. You ever take that out? Oh no 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 no! I can't handle the water. Um, my, my tummy can't. My tummy can't handle the water. I mean, a little queasy. Um, so I think it's a great it's a great concept, and I think it's really kind of low impact because you can do it via Zoom. Um, you know, like. Right now we have two and, cameras on us and <laughs> it can get really crazy the, the more you yeah. dive down the rabbit hole. But if it's so on the point of we're just trying to have these conversations with people and kind of show, you know, what and, art is happening in and, Duluth. And you know what? And then the podcast can also lead you into other other projects in terms of like, hey, you know what? We did this little conversation about the art, but how about we actually go and show this person doing their art and then you can counter that with you know images of the lake and like you know it kind of get a little bit deeper into it and make it a little bit more artistically and more film and right. you know that could be a five minute little thing where you know you get a little bit more into what he is and then or what she is if it's the boat maker you know why you know they we're just right. obsessed with the boat now so <laughs> you guys did this and if we don't if we come in the summer and we don't see a boat we're very upset <laughs> So upset. Oh, we're gonna be. We're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna braid my hair like a Viking. I'm gonna get a big beard, and I'm gonna go on this boat. Well, I don't watch, know about Frank you. I'm standing on, on. I'm standing on the tip of the boat like George Washington. That's what I'm doing. You can go <laughs> well, ahead after after he's thrown up a couple of times <laughs> as he crosses the Delaware. Yeah. So um, this has been a a great conversation. I think that we did. I think. I, that podcast idea definitely is something that that I think it's can start it off. I mean, even going down to just saying, you know what, um, alerting the authorities that are so eager to see something happen and be like, hey, we're doing this, by the way. Um, and this is the reason for it. And it becoming a part of your pitch deck, of, essentially, right? You're just like, hey, look, we have all these interviews. All these artists are doing great stuff. Yeah. Which we now have. we just need to connect it to something that everybody's going to do anyway. Everybody's going to be outside anyways. So let's yeah. start to yeah. expose people that this mm-hmm. is accessible, that this isn't something that you need a PhD to understand dance or that you don't need to um, fully understand fine art of the little dot on the big white right. canvas you don't need a silver um, to spoon. enjoy a to enjoy a, a painting of some sort um, to go out. And I know that that would be a great great impact so we usually end off with you guys giving us your best pitch um for a reason let's let's do your best pitch for to want to come on board as an artist in duluth to come on board with this idea of creating this summer festival yeah, you weren't expecting this you weren't were expecting you? sorry i threw you a curveball a lot of the times people just give us their log line and i don't like that so we're, we're switching it up a little bit okay sell us on duluth on the lake effect Okay. <laughs> oh, gosh. I just got really nervous. Yeah, so Don't worry, we're just a bunch of goofs. <laughs> we want to do this project because we think that Lake Superior and Duluth should be shown to the world. We think we are a unique environment with so much art, whether it dance, painting, boat making, or music. We think that people should travel here to Duluth to see what we have to offer. There is no environment in the world that's like this. I mean, our temperature can fluctuate a hundred degrees in a single year. Like that's crazy, you know, and 
we want to express that through our movement. We want to express that through music and whatever other artists want to join us. But initially, we want to portray a film so everyone, every, and I mean anyone, can see it, That especially if they don't live here in Duluth. Mm -hmm. And we want to put Duluth on a map in, in a way that's different than it has been done. Yeah. Oh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we see this community as a gathering place and a sharing space where we want to collaborate and um, share everything that we love about this beautiful space and provider for our community. And we know that it can provide us tangible things, but it can also provide the untangible. And that's what we can express with our movement and with this festival of celebrating the arts. <laughs> for us personally we're all really passionate about dancing so i think we just want to help just integrate dance into the community and like let people know that we're here and we're passionate about something too and we just want to share that love and make it accessible and bring it like make it here make it not in new york city not in LA, but there's dance here in Duluth, and the lake is what everybody knows, so making it connected to that in some way, I think. We're dancers, not talkers. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. why don't you should have, you should have, you should have done not, something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been the greatest. That would have been the best pitch. Just yeah. stop. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, the camera moves out, and then you're on stage. There we go. We would have, we would have been sold. Yeah, yeah, right. But amazing. <laughs> All right, Next great. Time. Well, uh, Dominique, Sarah, and Sarah, uh, thank you for for joining us. Um, looking forward to the uh, to the next time we get we get out. Well, I mean, we'll have to figure out if we can come out during the summer. Um, and but we'll definitely see you next year because we'll be coming back to Catalyst. Not going to get rid of us, Phil. We'll always be there. Um, that's just a joke. I don't know why. I, I, yeah, I've, right. I've been you having always, one way yeah. conversations with Phil for a long yeah, time. Right. Now. On this podcast. On this yeah. podcast. Very one way yeah, directions. Right. Um, so uh, fantastic. And, and once again, we tell this to everybody. And we sincerely mean it. If there's any way that we could possibly help you to get this, especially this podcasting thing off the ground, if there's any questions <laughs> or any way that we can kind of help guide or, or assist in some way, please mm -hmm. do not hesitate to ask. That is why we're here. That is why we do this podcast. So we're trying to make sure that people kind of understand that their project can have legs and that we can make bigger things happen from smaller, humble beginnings. And mm -hmm. then, um, then also, yeah, trying to connect, uh, trying to connect people to more people. So yeah. Thanks for coming on guys. Thank you very much. Well, it was another great conversation. We got to speak about dance, which is not something that we usually get to speak about. Um, a couple more episodes coming up with uh, mediums that we usually don't get to speak about yeah, very right. often. Exactly. Well, you um, know, we need to explore other worlds and right. other mediums. So we're going to become more well-rounded artists. Yeah, right. Absolutely. So um, other great story worlds that you can go ahead and watch and listen to. You can see them to my left. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.